Hey, hey, how you doing? So I have to tell you, it's very common for people to have anxieties when it comes to learning to code. It's a huge world, the coding world, that has so many options, JavaScript, Java, C Sharp, Python, C++, not Ruby, PHP. It goes on and on and on and on and on. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a couple of quick tips that are gonna help you with your anxieties and some free training as well. Unique training you've never seen anywhere else that's gonna help you with your coding anxieties and in fact, it's going to help you with all your anxieties. So let me help you out. First of all, don't let yourself get overwhelmed with all the different options that are out there. In fact, in your career, you may find yourself only using a very small subset of the options. Let me explain that in non-nerd words. Let's say you decide to become a Java programmer. You will not need to know more than 20% of Java, if that much. When I was doing a lot of Java work, I was a hardcore to the 10th power Java nerd. I barely used 5, 10% of Java. And I worked with Java for years producing commercial applications. That's just the nature of programming. It doesn't mean you're gonna be doing necessarily one thing your entire career. In fact, you probably find yourself pivoting, more on that in a second, but when you're actually at a particular place of work, you're doing projects for clients perhaps, you're probably gonna be using, well, you will only be using a very small portion of what's out there, like a tiny, less than 1% on a particular, on a particular job. Now, in the life of a developer, people who watch my channel know this, you will likely be switching from technology A to B to C. So number one, what that tells you is that there's no such thing as learning the wrong language. There's no such thing as learning the wrong library. So for example, you start with Vue and then you find out a year later, two years later that there are only React jobs available to you. No worries, because you know Vue, you'll be able to pivot into React like this. So it brings me to my next point and tip. My whole training program is predicated and based upon my decades of experience as being a developer, commercial developer from the 1990s. So what I do is I teach the key things that you need to know to be a professional developer. What I would want people working for me, what I would want them to know when they come into my office to interview with me. So... First and foremost, you need to know what I call the fundamentals. Once you got that, that will open up the whole world of coding. It will give you what I call nerd eyes, which will allow you to assess all the different specializations that are out there. What's a code specialization? Well, you could be a Python systems uh, scripter and pro coder. You could become an AI developer with Python. You could become a full stack developer with PHP or JavaScript and Express. You could become a Python full stack de developer. You could become a mobile developer. These are all different specializations. There are many, many more. I could do all 10 videos just on the different specializations in development. Doesn't matter. At the end of the day, if you're trained as a developer, much like if you're trained as a great musician, whether uh, you play this type of guitar, or that type of guitar, or this type of keyboard, or that type of keyboard, you'll be able to do it. Same thing with programming. Once you understand your fundamentals of programming, you'll be able to pivot here, here, there, and everywhere with little difficulty. So don't let that anxiety that frequently I see infects young nerdlings, the anxiety that you're going to choose the wrong technology. It just doesn't happen. So the final tip I want to bring up is that all these anxieties are really a result of your primitive Lizard brain. See, we have two operating systems in our mind, well, in our brain. We have our higher logical operating system, and we have our lower lizard brain operating system. The lizard brain controls our emotions. It controls the processing of data that come, that's coming in through our senses, what we see, what we hear, what we taste, what we smell, touch. And the lizard brain has a tremendous amount of control over our lives, much more so than you think. 
So a lot of our anxieties are derived, well, all, our, all of our, our anxieties are derived from the lizard brain. And many times these anxieties could be uh, unfounded, meaning the lizard brain is literally designed to overemphasize, to magnify artificially, to magnify potential dangers and threats. So the lizard brain doesn't like anything new doesn't like anything new. So when you're learning how to code and you're hearing all these people tell you about, oh, you got to learn this, you got to learn that, and it's very alien to most people when the first time they look at code, the lizard brain is going, eh. And then you start thinking about all the anxieties. Ooh, am I going to be able to learn this stuff? It's complex. And then your lizard brain goes nuts and it starts creating all these negative emotions. You got to stop it. So what you have to do is you have to understand the points I made earlier in this video in terms of the reality of code. Number two, you got to learn to train your lizard brain. There are exercises to do that. So what I am offering for you for free, no obligation to anything, whatever, it's a email-based training system. And I put it out months ago, and I'm just letting people know about it again. Put in your email address, and then automatically you start getting these lizard brain training tips. It's based on my lizard wizard course, which you don't have to take, but the lizard... Komodo, Lizard Wizard Komodo, it's called. You sign up to the form. I'll have a link below. And uh, you start getting some training. You start working on your anxieties. Like any other skill, to learn to master your anxieties and your lizard brain, you have to practice it. You have to take knowledge and skills and apply it to the job. In this case, the job is to learn to control your crazy lizard brain. We all have it. We all have it. So there you go. Those are my basic tips about how to handle your anxiety when learning to code. Oh, here's another anxiety. I'll just leave you with this bonus one. Software development and coding is an error-prone process, meaning you're constantly making errors. So don't be afraid to make errors. Don't be afraid to have buggy code. Don't be afraid that you're going to run into problems. This is actually just normal. Even the best developers in the world will constantly, constantly be making mistakes. And that's why we have Windows 10 and we have iOS, I don't know what's that now, 13 or 14. You know, we have uh, many, many updates to Android. A lot of times these updates are bug fixes. They're feature additions and they're bug fixes. Even the best of the best developers in the world make errors. So don't worry about it. You're going to make errors. You're going to create bugs. And especially when you're learning, you're going to run into hiccups and uh bumps in the road as they say but that's a reason to keep going remember if coding was super easy then it wouldn't be worth much there's a reason why developers get paid a lot of money it's because that barrier to entry seems very high to a lot of people but because you're watching this video and i'm uncle steph i make it easy